there are seven dispensations. Genesis, in the Old Testament, the world started time, according to when God said it, was 4008 B.C. It has not been around for billions and billions of years, like Carl Sagan's has said. The Old Testament has spanned over 4,000 years. So four out of the seven dispensations has already passed. You remember, uh, here's another example. How many days did it take for God to carry the earth, heavens and earth? 60 days. Yes. No, no, no. We're here to learn. Six days. He worked. This is how God worked. He spoke it and it happened. Oh, a little bit like that in that power, huh? Six days. Six days of creation. Seventh day, rest. Did you know that the creation, the creation cycle, is reflective of the dispensation time? Did you know that? God revealed to us time through creation. Creation reveals dispensation. Ah! The book of Psalms say how many years we have on this earth? Seventy. Right? Seventy is seven cycles of ten. Now some of us live longer. That's a blessing. But there's that number seven again. Seven cycles of ten. Seven is included. Seven the rest. Seven is the last time we're here on earth. Now, there's seven dispensations. Genesis recorded in everything exactly in 4008 B.C. That covered over 4,000 years. So if that's 4,000 years, that's four dispensations gone. That was the Old Testament era, the, year, uh, the era of the prophets. What's, what's the year that we're living in now, B.D.? 2014 A.D.? We've already spent another two two cycles of dispensation. That six dispensations gone, already spent. Eight and fourteen and twenty-two. According to the Gregorian calendar and Jewish calendar, are you ready for this? Of twenty-two. Are you getting excited? <laughs> The time adjustment from the Gregorian calendar to the Jewish calendar. That was a time period that had to be adjusted. So you got 6,000. From the cycles of the, the, this is wrong. This is overlapping. This is actually underlapping. In the Jewish calendar, most days have 30 days and some have 29 days. The Gregorian calendar messed all that up because of the equinox and they tried to line it up with the stars and the sun and all that baloney. Okay. Here's the thing. When you look at that, when you look at that, that's off by 60 years. 60 years. So when you when you add that to this. Excuse me, 960 years. The Gregorian calendar, for time period of a point, according to the Jewish time limit, remember, this is way off. 960 years, that means that's 40 years less than 1,000 years of the cycle that has not been accounted for. God has to account for that in the last time. That's 600, 982 years in this cycle. The time period for the Jewish and the Gregorian, the time that they were off by, was 960 years. Where do you get that? I get that from the time. They don't go back to the to the Genesis period. They go back to their own period. And they cheated each calendar of a day is here, a few days here. Uh, remember leap year? That's another four years that they've taken away from this calendar. 
they're, they're going by the sun, the moon, and stars. God is going by his Jewish calendar of prophecy. It has thrown everything off by 960 years. So you're saying that the Lemurian is off from the Jewish, Jewish by 960 60 years. Right. Okay. Because of leap year and... Leap year and all the times that they have adjusted to fit okay. their equinox in their system. Right. Okay. But here's the most important thing I'm trying to get you to see. This is a rough estimate. So right now we should be at 600... 6,000, uh, about 6,900 6, around there. For the year. From the Jewish calendar. 6, from the Jewish calendar. But here's the part I'm trying to make. How long is the, how long is the millennial reign of Christ? 1,000 years. That's the last dispensation. That's the seventh one. That's 7,000. That's how close we are. How close are we? Very close. We are in approximately, if you go by time, about 100 years, give or take. There. Maybe you're off. I was going to say, because... You Probably 18. Well, I mean, I'm going, I'm going by this. I'm, I'm going by the the least effect to the most effect. We're either <laughs> off by 100 years, or we're off by 18 years. So if you're 40, you will probably see Jesus when you're 58. I'm not 50, so I should see that time I'm 50. If you're 24, 42. Maybe. 28. What, what are we saying here? We are the last generation. We are close. And I need my friend, my professor friend in Landmark, to help me on this and to set if I'm wrong. But when, I, when you look over the dispensations by themselves, 4,000 of the Old Testament, 2,000 of the New Testament, that's already six dispensations gone, used up. We are working toward the seventh dispensation, which is the thousand year reign of Christ. Are you all following me? Are you all getting it? So that's how the creation goes with goes with this. That it took six calendar. days of work right. on the seventh day he rested. There's so six, six days. Six dispensations and then the seventh All right. is where the, six we're gone. the six thousand years of dispensation represent the fulfillment right. of the prophecy. Days, right. The seventh is the thousand year reign where Christ will reign on this earth. And it's the day of your rest like the day of rest. Okay. Now what I went, when I talk to y'all will take a semester in college. You know what a semester is? About three or four months. I don't have three or four months in college work. Mm -hmm. But what are we saying here? We're saying is this. Just by the numbers alone, mm -hmm. we are close. According to time alone, we are close. And it says in my Bible. The Bible says right here. 4,000 B.C. We're close. No, no, I'm not setting the day or the hour. I'm not saying this is when Jesus comes. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But what we're telling you, if you go by the time, the thousand year cycles of time that God has allowed it, we are working toward the seventh cycle. We are working toward the seventh dispensation period. And the seventh dispensation period is what? The thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. What happens after that is the eighth. Number eight is the number of new beginnings. The new beginnings is eternity. So the reign of Christ is when we're erected. Right. Nisan is the first month of the Jewish... We're going to get a Jewish calendar. Yeah, we are. We have it. Uh, I'm looking for one right now. Here's one right here, right now. Christian store, of course. Here it is. If you want to know what your birthday lands on, if you're born in March and April, you were born in the same month that Jesus was born. Anyone here born in that month? Nope. Okay. No yogurt coupon. Now. <laughs> but uh, here it's right here. If you all want to see, we're going to get a Jewish calendar. Has your church taught you this? It better. If your church does not teach you this, you need to come here. We will teach you the truth. That's all we do. That's all we do is teach the truth. That's all we do. We're getting close to when Jesus comes back.
the king is coming. The king is coming. And it won't be on a donkey this time. The next time we see him as we bow our heads. The next time we see him. He's not going to come through the city gate of Jerusalem. He is coming in the sky. He is coming on the sky from the west end. And when the doors open to heaven, everyone is going to see it. And he won't be coming on a donkey with his prayer shawl and raggedy clothes. He's going to be coming as he should be. The King of kings and Lord of lords. And upon his head will be many crowns. On his right hand the scepter. Angels, countless numbers of angels will accompany him this time. And we will be there too on our white horses. Watching and seeing our king before us. This world will never know what hit it when they see Jesus. This world will have no idea what's going on until they see Jesus. It will shake the very foundations, period. And this time, like it says in Philippians 2.11, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. There will be no doubt. There will be no denial. Everyone will submit that Jesus Christ is Lord. There will be no rejection. As we bow our heads, this is a prayer for y'all. This is time that Jesus will spend with you now. The next time some psychology class or some sociology class or someone asks you a question, who would you want to invite to have dinner with you at your table? Yeah. I want you to remember someone that's already there. His name is Jesus. He's there. He's there with us. When you go to sleep, He's there with us. When you wake up, He's there with us. Jesus is with you. What king can say they're with their people all the time? What king could be like our king? What king can love like our king? What king can sacrifice? Kings want sacrifices to them. He sacrificed for us. Kings usually want and demand. Our king gives and gives and gives more. Our king asks for proof of your loyalty to him. This king is so loyal to you, he died for you. So as we bow our heads, may the Lord bless you. May he open your eyes to how close he is at the door. But more important, do you know this king? Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We praise your name. You are our king. We confess it. You are the Messiah. You are our Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, you are the only begotten Son of God. You are God in the flesh. We worship in you and we praise you. You are so merciful and loving to us that you give us truth and you reveal truth to us. We should take this truth and hide it in our hearts and apply it in our witness. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for for you, the King that abundantly forgives, that abundantly pardons. You love us, you watch over us, you protect us, you guide us. You're with us every day. You are hands on. Everything you're hands on in our lives, Lord. And we want, we invite that, we want that. We want your loving attention to every detail in our life. We want you to tell us and, and, and lead us and direct us as a shepherd to a sheep. Heavenly Father, we pray for those that don't know of the Lord Jesus Christ right now, and we pray that you may bring them to your Son. The most important thing that we can do is pray for those that are lost. Heavenly Father, there are people hurting, looking for answers, suffering right now. They need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. May you use this YouTube network to reach those out there that are lost. May they hear the words of Jesus and be saved by his blood. And Heavenly Father, that's the only purpose of this church, Lord. The only purpose that we're here 
It's because of you. To tell about you. To worship and praise you. To point people to you. The Lord let our lives reflect that as well. Use our lives as a testimony to a lost world around us, with our friends and our family, that they will be closer to Jesus as well. For the most important thing in our life, Lord, is not what we have or who we are. It's you. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you for your sacrifice, for your patience and your mercy and your forgiveness. But most of all, we thank you for you. Thank you, Lord, in Christ's name. Almost a couple months and then 